Reading 1 From the Psychological Commentaries on the Teaching of Gurdjieff and Auspinsky by Dr. Maurice Nicole, Volume 2 Birdlip, January 8, 1944 Note on the Study of Loss of Force The conception of force is an essential idea in the work. In order to awaken, a man must have force. Without force, he cannot awaken. The conception of force can be best understood if it is studied from two angles. The work says that a man loses force in a great many specific ways which it mentions that he gains force by work on them, and that he creates force by the act of self-remembering. Let us study loss of force. We are told that we can only begin to awaken after much effort and long struggle, and that this is due to the fact that life wants us to stay asleep for its own reasons. This means that life prevents us from conserving force. Or, put the other way, life takes our force. Since we are nothing but a mass of habits, life forms very early in us various habits of losing force, sometimes very complex ones. So, we lose force mechanically, just as we do everything else mechanically. It is very difficult to see how we lose force. We have to view ourselves in the light of new knowledge, to exchange our old ideas for new, in order to realize what is continually happening. A person may lose force in a flash just because of touching a negative emotion. In the work, which is long, we begin to realize that we are faced by this mass of habits that is not us. This is a painful experience, and it is unnecessary to enter into it unless one is convinced that there is something to reach. Now, to awaken, anything anti-mechanical may help. Self-observation is anti-mechanical and must come before everything else. But it is in non-identifying that the main key lies to preventing loss of force. Every act of non-identifying saves force. We are speaking of force necessary for awakening. If we identify with everything inner and outer, we cannot have force for doing or understanding the work. The work will remain far away as a vague cloud. After a time, one begins to notice that one is asleep. That is, one begins to notice that one has lost force. At the same time, one notices that the work and its ideas seem very far away. When one begins to have a barometer of this kind, it is possible to study in more detail what it is that causes loss of force. Although the causes of loss of force can be arranged in general categories that apply to everyone, such as negative states, each person has particular causes that must be observed personally in the greatest detail and reflected upon with the greatest care in the light of the new understanding that the work gives. Otherwise, there is no sincerity with oneself, upon which alone can anything be built within oneself. Nor can there be any center of gravity established by the influence of the work. And so, nothing will reach us that belongs to real I. All this belongs to the necessity of valuation that is frequently spoken of. Without valuation of the work, there can be no sincerity with it, nor can there be a definite inner perception of loss of force. That is, 
a person will not notice distinctly that he is asleep, although he may notice that the work seems far away. It is very interesting to begin to notice the sources of loss of force and the conditions connected with them. There are certain trains of thought, for instance, that cause loss of force, and it may take some years before you see why. And it often happens that things you thought quite harmless and even admirable cause loss of force. Now, to recall briefly that other angle, what creates force. It is the act of self-remembering that creates force. The opening of the mind to the act and the meaning and significance of self-remembering and the accompanying separation from all one's usual ideas of oneself, from one's usual small feelings and internal considerings, this actually creates force. So one gains force by every act of non-identifying because one prevents its loss, and one creates force by self-remembering. Now you will see that it is necessary to isolate oneself from the action of life. But to understand what this means in a general sense and what it means for each of you in a particular sense is not something given us ready-made. It is only gradually that one begins to see how impatient some people are about the work. I sometimes marvel at people expecting to reach in a short time states that demand a lifetime of work before they can be attained. There is always something outside and something inside that a person should try to isolate himself from. What does it mean to isolate oneself? You can say insulate if you like. If life takes all force and keeps us asleep, it is necessary to isolate oneself from at least some of its various powers over us. Some people are always upset about something or other, about something that they think went very wrong. Let us say they are politically upset, or morally upset, or religiously upset, or hygienically upset, or simply just always upset by everything. They lose force. That is, in these ways, life robs them of all force for awakening. They think, however, that they are doing right. This is not a good thing to think mechanically. When you feel you are right, you may be sure you are asleep. But of course, life robs us of force in many other ways. We are not important in the ray of creation. We are living on a mere point in the Milky Way, which is billions sunned. And there are billions of Milky Ways. Yes, we are very small. But there is a chance. To have this double feeling is a form of self-remembering. Now, as regards self-remembering, which is the means of actually creating force, you remember the first conscious shock and the energies resulting? There are many ways of self-remembering, but they all depend on the feeling that there is something else, that this life on this extremely bad planet is not explicable in terms of itself. There is something else. We then meditate on the octave from the sun until it becomes a living thing in our mind and speaks to us. Then perhaps we begin to see what isolation means. However, we have moments in which we feel that the future will surely be better. But there are two futures, one in time and one in scale, one horizontal, the other vertical, and always there, just above our present state. There are many forms of self-remembering. You have to get out of your own way to get out of your own light. Since we are different at different moments, self-remembering is different at different times. The sly man knows this. He does not always practice the same method. To do so is to make it mechanical. What is mechanical is useless for the work. He moves, as it were, forward and then backward and then forward and so on. 
In any case, he experiments. He notices what was and is no longer useful and invents some other way, and so on. Sometime we will speak of Slyman. But everyone should, above all things, think of and study and try to self-remember each day. Try to get out of your own way. Try to let something get in that cannot because you are in the way. Can you stop the noise of yourself for even a moment? Can you get out of the ordinary feeling of yourself? Can you become no one for a moment to yourself? Or, by contrast, can you feel the intense reality of yourself? Can you feel I in all you have to do for a time? All these are different ways of remembering oneself. There are many other ways, but try to discover one for yourself to begin with and get to know the taste of it. Then you will know more distinctly when you are asleep. We are trying to awaken to another level of life. We believe this is the real meaning of our existence. But to awaken, we must have force. Whatever we do consciously remains. Whatever we do mechanically is lost to us. So we have to learn how to live in life and not be eaten by life. Identify with life and give all your force to life and you cannot awaken just as you cannot if you identify with yourself. How rich that young man felt himself, how identified he was with all his virtues and talents and excellences. He was told to go and sell all he had before he could awaken. He was very sorrowful. Think what it would mean to cease to ascribe to yourself everything you do and think you are. That is to sell all your possessions. Who can imagine what this really means? Have you caught even a single glimpse yet of its meaning in regard to yourself? If so, you will begin to realize where your force goes every moment, how it is used, and why people are asleep without knowing it. <laughs>